everyone and welcome back. I've got six packages here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six packages with two of them go together and uh, this one might have more than one item in it because it is from one of you. This is from a Patreon called Mark. You might see him in the comments from time to time. Really nice guy. Um, I have the uh, human uh, malware thing going around. So this might be filmed over the span of several days, so I might forget what I've said from scene to scene. Uh, so yeah, bear with me, but uh, let's get started. First one up is this one here. Uh, it says resistance. Really? Oh, okay. I don't think so, but anyways, I think I know what it is. $14.04, November 27th um, uh, ordered, November, uh, December 20th arrived, so just over a month. Um, that's why the prices are kind of high because I, I pay for uh, reasonable shipping or I get from sellers that have reasonable shipping. Okay, yeah, they're not resistances. Five of these. Let me zoom you in. So what these are, uh, these got really expensive in the last couple of years, but I've made projects with them, so now I have to kind of <laughs> deal with it. These are these uh, 0.96 inch OLEDs. And specifically, these are the ground VCC uh, serial clock and serial data uh, I2C ones that go with my um, uh, DigiSpark uh, current sensor project. Uh, these guys here. So that's the PCB way board there. So these will go directly here. See, ground VCC SCL SDA. That'll fit just in there. So, uh, perfect. I actually thought I had more of these, but I don't. So, now I do. I got five. So, I can make a couple more of these boards up, but I think now I'm actually out of the DigiSparks. So, fantastic. <laughs> I mean, what am I supposed to do? Um, DigiSparks right now are extremely expensive as well with the pandemic pricing, so... It is what it is, but these things here uh, at fourteen dollars Canadian for five of them. Uh, that makes it what three bucks each, so not cheap. But that's why I tend to socket these things in my project so I can rip them out after. So I yeah got five here. Probably gonna install a couple on permanent basis and keep the other ones for prototyping. Next ones uh, up are these two. Um, they go together. They're Kind of the same thing. Uh, Three dollars and thirty-four on this one here, and eleven dollars and forty-eight on this one here. Both ordered December sixteenth. Both arrived January fifth. These are just notes for me. This is two plus four. And that is because I bought lengths of uh, two millimeter diameter and four millimeter diameter in both red and black. These are uh, heat shrink. This is that uh, inexpensive two to one uh, without the adhesive inside. This one here, uh, I bought three meters of 4.8 millimeters in three different colors. This is the uh, three to one stuff with the adhesive on the inside. So, I had bought some of this stuff before. Um, I, I got the six point something mil, and so this is a little bit smaller, but it shrinks, you know, literally three to one. So, um, you can buy them a little bit smaller and they'll shrink a lot, you know, to a lot smaller size. The other stuff I had was slightly too big for some of the things I wanted to do. And I got this clear stuff uh, so we can actually test water ingress into um, wires that are going to be, you know, set inside this. So I got clear, red, and black in 4.8 mils. And I got the 2 to 1 in uh, 2 mil and 4 mil. So I'm going to cut off a little section of each and we're going to heat shrink them down onto stuff and then we can see the difference. I suppose I shouldn't make assumptions here. So uh, what heat shrink is, when you make a solder connection, it usually goes over to protect that connection against shorting on other solder connections or on, you know, any other piece of metal. Um, 
However, the ones with the adhesive in it, uh, they're good for protecting against water ingress as well. If you need to protect against water ingress, um, you need to have either the adhesive in the heat shrink or a different way to protect from water ingress. And electrical tape, the black stuff, that is not protective of water ingress at all. So get that out of your minds. Uh, so here we have a barbecue skewer. Uh, these are the actual, the ones I shrunk last time. So this is the two to one stuff from last time. As you can see, it does not have any adhesive in it. I can, I can roll that. You can probably see that edge a little bit better. So you can roll that around the stick. But this one here is the three to one with the adhesive. And so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so next up, we've got the two millimeter, um, two to one, the four millimeter, two to one, and then the 4.8 millimeter, almost five millimeter, uh, three to one with adhesive, just got the clear one there. Probably should have used red to fulfill the theme, but hey, whatever. Professional YouTuber. So I'm going to use my, uh, hot air gun here. I'm just going to give this guy a shrink. And as you can see, that didn't take much for it to cinch down. So right now it's no longer loose. Okay, then the bigger diameter one. Typically, I just use the smallest heat shrink that fits over my, my wire. But with the three to one stuff, you don't have to worry about it so much. And then here's the three to one stuff. So this is still going to be, I think, a little bit too big of a diameter to fit the skewer. Actually, I think it might be fine. The only thing is these um, three to ones with the, they're actually double walled, they're thicker, as well as having the adhesive. Um, they do take a lot of heat and also takes them a long time to cool down. Just gonna touch these up a little bit more and then I'll let that dry or cool down and I'll bring it back. So everything should be cooled down now. So as you can see here, this was, I think this was six millimeter diameter, two to one, and it spins freely. The two millimeter is locked. It will not turn. So right, if you have the correct diameter, you know, this heat shrink barely fit over this cocktail stick or barbecue skewer to start with, um, it shrunk down, it, it doesn't turn. And same thing with the four millimeter, so we're fine there. But the real winner is this, uh, even though this is uh, 4.8 millimeters, almost five millimeters, okay? This still shrunk down and stuck to the barbecue skewer. And you might be able to see, if I did the focus correctly, that there is some adhesive that actually came out. So this is what I'd like to test. I'm probably gonna solder some wires together, uh, stick them outside in the rain and the sun and everything for you know, extended period of time and see if we get any corrosion on the inside. So yeah, heat shrink, super useful. Buy it before you need it. Next one up is this one here. And so far, all the footage you've seen up till now has been in the same day. Uh, I'm almost out of breath though, so we'll see. Uh, $7.91, December 16th to January 5th. Can you tell what this is yet? It's a little bit dark on your end, isn't it? Professional YouTuber, everyone. All right, so this here is a kit of DuPont crimp terminals. It seems like it was actually, am I opening this the wrong way? Oh, it seems like I'm gonna break it. Oh, this box isn't even the right size. Look at that, you see that? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so what this has is a whole bunch of these uh, housings. Uh, I need to fix the luminosity. Be right back. I can't get a good focus on it. You're just going to have to deal with it. Sorry. But anyways, uh, these are all uh, universal uh, terminal holders for the, the DuPont connections. Uh, DuPont being uh, what a lot of breadboarding wire uses, sort of like uh, these guys here. You see that? So I've got, uh, now I've got the crimping die. I figured I would order some uh, DuPont connectors and then I could make up my own custom leads. Uh, they come in interesting 
you know, sizes. I think the lid will probably say, yeah, one by one, one by two, one by three, one by four, one by five, one by six, two by two, two by three, two by four, two by five, and two by six. And um, these are universal receptacles. They can take either the male or the female terminals. So this here would be the male terminals. And those over here, these are the female ones. And they crimp the exact same way. Um, do I feel like doing a bit of uh, precise camera work and crimping on camera? Sure, let's give it a shot. No guarantees though. You might be just barely able to see here, but uh, these things have two wings. They have this wing here and this wing here. You know, these are these would be the female terminals you're looking at because this is a, a hole that receives you know a pin. Um, so this wing here, I don't know which one's in focus, and uh, sorry, but I'm running out of oxygen. Um, that wing grabs the copper, and these wings here grabs the insulation. So it's kind of like this one here is for the electrical conductivity, the one you know in the middle for electrical conductivity, the one on the outside for uh, strain relief. It grabs the insulation so when you pull on the wire it doesn't pull out. So your um, crimping tool has to be made similarly. So if I can get you a good angle on this whoop. You can tell on the inside there, there's a step. So there's this part, which kind of crimps, you see uh, as the uh, the butt cheeks there. And on the inside, there are two levels of that. You can see that one is bigger than the other. So the big one, this one here, that one does the insulation and that one there does the actual wire. Not sure how visible this will be, probably make a dedicated crimping video in the future. But I have stripped my wire back just big enough so that when the insulation is grabbed by the top there, by the, the big claws, the, um, the actual The actual wire portion of it will sit inside of this, you know, the wire side of it. This is kind of crappy wire with kind of thick insulation. But perhaps you can see what I'm talking about here. So yeah, that wire would go right in there, sort of slide in there with the stripped end um, going into that the middle section here and the insulation going to the end there. So what I do is I just load it up into the crimpers and go to town. If you want a dedicated video about this let me know. I'll probably make one anyways though. So yeah I've got the uh, crimp loaded up into the tool. Is it right side up? It is right side up. So yeah the uh, little uh, tabs have to go towards the butt cheeks and then you load up your wire from the back if you didn't crimp it too small which I feel like I might have might have it just barely in there not my best work but again I'm blaming the lack of oxygen to the brain and yeah I missed a little bit zoom you in again don't know if you can see there but it looks like I just missed the insulation with the second wing here so it needed to go in more but yeah, like I said, lacking a little bit of oxygen to the brain here. So um, I think uh, I think I'll make a full video since now I have you know multiple microscopes and uh, uh, you know I, I think I can produce a crimping video if you guys would be interested in it. So yeah, let's just move on. Next up is this Banggood one. Before we go on to the uh, Patreon sent one, now a little scared when I see. A death adapter included included in the package, but it is what it is. I suppose this is uh, you know the high cost of low prices, as they would say. This one um, sent in for review by Banggood.com. I don't know the price, but I think it was just under a hundred bucks, uh, which is a fairly good price 
if you need one of these. And eventually you might even know what this is if I can get it open. Okay, so far, you know that it's a newly designed, easy operation, widely used, and large power and safety. Ooh, lead free. Oh, they didn't need to send the death adapter. There's the death adapter, but there is the North American IEC cable. So that's good. Yep. Yeah. This here is a yeah, electronic hot plate. Oh, I hope I don't get my reflection in there. This is um, sort of like a reflow oven, kind of. It's not really. Uh, this is just basically, uh, it's like an open reflow oven. It has just the heated top on that. And that allows you to actually reflow SMD parts or, in my case, oh boy, a little off center. Uh, or, in my case, uh, it's going to be to, well, I'll show you actually. Um, but yeah, basically, very simple. It works just like a soldering iron, has temperature here. Uh, you hit the set and then there's some sort of calibration going on. Probably some stuff in the instructions. Um, but yeah, this thing will probably go up to, you know, about 350 or so degrees. And yeah, this should be pretty nice. Uh, first things first though, I want to check the grounding on here. Oh my god, there's not much in there either. So I'm going to check the grounding on this. Um, then we're going to plug it in. And then I'll show you why I specifically wanted one of these. So the way I do this is I set my multimeter in continuity mode. That's beeping. And then I go to the plug. And I'll touch the ground pin, like so. And I'm just going to check all the metal around the uh, case here. That one's grounded. The plate, probably can't see that, but the actual plate, grounded. Some posts on the inside. That one's insulated. Okay, that's not, that's not great, but you know, you won't stick your fingers underneath here. The little legs of the device. Yep. And sometimes you can... Yeah, just poke through the paint there, just to make sure about this. Yeah, okay, so we're fully ground grounded, I can plug this in. These here are Cobb LEDs, chip on board LEDs. Um, they have an aluminum backing to keep them cool, which you're supposed to couple to a heat sink. But that also means that when you're trying to solder you know, this is my soldering iron here. Trying to solder onto these two uh, wire points, you have to put so much heat into it. Like, like this little, this is a 60 watt soldering iron with a relatively, you know, large tip, I guess. Uh, it has trouble soldering this. I have to hold it there for like several minutes. What this here will allow me to do is heat up this whole surface. Um, probably can heat this up to, you know, up to 300 degrees, probably. Th I think it goes up to like 400 degrees, but I would just want it maybe about a hundred degrees or so. And then, um, the go in with the soldering iron and this should be super easy to add solder to. So we're going to try this. I'm going to give you a view of the interface after, but I just want to give it a shot here. So I'm going to flip it on. So it's default to a hundred. I'm going to just go up and see how far it goes up. Well, it goes plenty up. Okay. So I'm going to put it to 100, let's say 150. And let it come up to temp. So it's come up to temp. Uh, it says it's come up to temp at least. Now, if I were to try to just pop my soldering iron onto this and uh, try to put, you know, solder onto it, it would take forever. So let's just see here. My soldering iron is 330 degrees right now. Put that on there. 
Look at that. Instantly, instantly solders. No problems at all. So now I can pop a wire onto there and we're good to go. Neat. I'm going to change the camera around and show you what I'm seeing. All right. I might have just enough breath for this last package. Um, this one is from Patreon Mark. Now let me tell you, the best way for you to show support is to become a patron. Uh, your two bucks, I think, is the lowest tier now because the Patreon fee fees. Um, your your Patreon patronage means a ton to me. This is just above and beyond. Um, this is not expected of everybody, but I I thank Mark a lot for this. I don't know what's inside here, but he said it was stuff off my wish list, and honestly. Um, when you guys send me stuff, it's a little embarrassing because, I mean, you guys pay so much in shipping to get it up here to the Great Canadian North. So there's the address if you do want to send something. P.O. Box 42089, Ottawa, Ontario. Actually, sometimes it's uh, 42089, then Saint Laurent, Ottawa, Ontario. Yeah, whatever. K1K4L8, Canada, not Cambodia. All right, so I'm going to open this up. He said it's nothing exciting, but when you get a mystery gift, it's always exciting. Okay, nothing in there. Looks like all in here. Take a look-see here. Are you kidding me? Mark, what are you doing? Holy crap. Okay. So Oh. Okay, I don't know what to say. So these are uh two solid state drives. These are uh SATA solid state drives. They go in your com in your computer. Um, uh, and these, the MX500s are actually extremely good drives. There are some better ones, but I think for the amount of performance to the price ratio, these things are great. But he sent me two terabytes. He sent me, yeah, two one terabyte drives. So I can either run these together uh, in parallel and I guess it's called in raid in on computer terms to double the speed or I can run them uh, in a different raid configuration to um, have one be redundant to the other uh, for like backup purposes or I can just run them both individually as one terabyte drives I don't know what to say mark these are uh, these are these are not cheap um, not even in the land of the free that's awesome. So these will go in the computer. I guess I'll have to do another PC upgrade video. And these are the ubiquitous storage that I use in the camera. My camera is a Nikon D3300. I think because the 3400 doesn't have the mic port. Uh, regardless, it takes these uh, big sort of uh, SD cards. And then these little SD cards sometimes are cheaper, but I can't buy these because sometimes these adapters, they go wonky, so I lose footage. It has happened. So I got two of these. Uh, these are the extreme ones, 150 megs per second. So if I ever do upgrade to, um, well, my dream camera would be a D850 at this point that does a 4K video, these will be fast enough for a 4K video. So these are not, again, not cheap. And then we've got four of these 64 gig still fast right a little bit little bit slower uh, but still very fast and these go into the GoPro or they go into Raspberry Pis and all sorts of things like that Mark I don't know what to say thank you so much uh, I'm gonna see I'm gonna open one of these because yeah, I ain't, I ain't reselling no gifts, that's for sure. There we go. There's the SSD. Crucial is a very good brand. I think the, the best brands right now are Samsung. 
but you pay quite a premium because Samsung makes pro drives. So if I were buying my own drives, this is what I would buy. So yeah, they come in this nice metal case. Very nice. I can add two terabytes, which is great because I already have, so my computer, how it works, I've got the one terabyte NVMe at the moment, which is the fastest uh, solid state drive technology, except I have Gen 3, they go up to Gen 4 now. I've got a 500 gig one of these and then a hard drive. So the 500 gig is not quite enough. That's why I had these on my wish list. And so now, yeah, I've got two terabytes. And so what has happened is I was editing off the hard drives because the, the capacity wasn't enough in these guys. But now I'm going to be editing off these things. So everything should be slightly faster, a little less uh, painful. Sorry, I can't, <laughs> can't catch my breath. Um, so yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, and you guys, you know, it would warm my heart if you went to the comments and said, you know, thank you to Mark because um, my content is free. Everything that I make is available for free. But Mark uh, already went above and beyond is a Patreon and then sent me these things to make the content a little bit easier to make. So I really appreciate it, Mark. Thank you so much. And uh, you let me know how I can repay you. I guess I, guess I know of one way, but uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that another day. Thanks a lot. This is awesome. And so I managed to make it all the way through the episode. I want to, um, well, I want to thank Mark so very much for the media. Any YouTube, uh, any digital creator knows the value of these things. Um, it's incredible. You can't have enough of it around. So this is awesome. So I thank you very much for that. Um, but those of you who want to help but don't want to take the extra step because, uh, again, this is un this is not needed. I would, I would rather get this stuff from sponsorships and the way I would get sponsorships is for you guys to keep watching uh, videos. So this is, I'm very thankful for this, but you know, Mark is just that kind of person. But for those of you that want to help, you know, watch the videos, hit the like, share with your friends, maybe join Patreon if you want to um, make, a, make a small contribution as well. Uh, so it's thanks to you guys why I get all of this stuff. And I also want to thank Banggood for sending me this review unit, which is still hot, by the way. So I'm going to go and uh, probably pass out and edit this tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.